you so much, Damon. I, uh, I'm supposed to be ready, ready now. Um, and uh, of course, thank you for letting me join this session. It's a tremendous uh, experience for me to do this online. As, as you know, Damon, uh, we've known each other for a couple of years now doing AC hackathons in Copenhagen physically. Uh, so this is the first time around doing an online AEC version for me as well. But thanks for allowing me on board. Um, I will do a rather quick intro to what, 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 what on earth is going on in Copenhagen when we talk about the urban innovation and innovation within the AEC industry. And then I'll be followed by my, uh, my, uh, my mentor, uh, my, uh, my uh, great friend, Nils Falk, uh, who's the CEO of HD Lab. And of course, he'll introduce uh, himself uh, in, in just uh, in due course. But allow me just before that to introduce to you the, the platform of Blockshop, which is a rather new uh, physical uh, innovation hub uh, being built in Copenhagen, in downtown Copenhagen. And my first slide here is a picture of the building, which uh, introduces to you um, um, a, a designed very highly uh, spoken by and spoken of, uh, criticized to be honest, designed by Rem Kohlhaas the Dutch architect who has designed this, in my view, beautiful building in, in downtown Copenhagen. Uh, within this building, we, uh, we host uh, the Danish Architectural Center, the Danish Design Center, and uh, the platform Blocks Hub, which I'm going to introduce uh, to you now. Um, let me, allow me to, uh, to zoom back a little bit because we, we created Blocks Hub some four years ago now because we saw uh, and an ever emerging need within the AEC industry to think uh, a little bit more uh, lateral. Uh, the fact that more and more companies are getting bigger, the fact that more and more companies, companies actually do believe that they can work out things themselves made us uh, reflect a little bit. And we leaned back and said, hey, as Yukai Benkler from Yale University says, uh, to be honest, the world is becoming too fast, too complex and too networked for any company to have all the answers inside. So if that is what we're up against in, in, in the future AEC industry, how do, how do we go about uh, dealing with that? So how do we swim upstream stream in order to innovate? And our answer was to create a hub in downtown Copenhagen, an urban innovation hub, uh, which focuses on, um, on sharing, which focuses on creating uh, a co-working space uh, for some nowadays 120 companies in all 700 people coming in and out every day. Uh, adding to that, Blocksub is a community of companies uh, within, I would say not necessarily only within the AEC industry, but also re being related to how we built and how we de develop sustainable cities. So, so the, the sweet spot here is are you or are you not engaged in developing uh, more sustainable cities, either building or designing or, or renovating or maintaining? And if the answer is yes, then you will be part of our community. The third ingredient of Blocksub is, is, the, is the matchmaking. So we're not a consultancy, we're not a project organization. To be honest, we are much more sort of a dating, a dating bureau, a professional dating bureau, meaning that we create matchmaking and partnerships between all the companies that either stay with us as part of the co-working space or are part of, of, of the community. And just to give you a, a, a little example of, 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 of what we do and how we do, this slide illustrates to you the, the, the eight overall sort of top agendas that we work, uh, we work with. Um, the sweet spot here is, is how do we create more sustainable cities in the future? And what we do in order to, to answer that question, then we focus in on these different uh, eight themes that you see in front of you, livability, mobility, um, um, sustainable buildings, design, circular economy, and of course tech as an underlying uh, uh, leverage uh, for, for innovating and, and moving forward within the AEC industry. So any project or any match we create between companies, any event we do, any hackathon we do, will be focusing on one of these eight, eight, uh, eight agendas. Now, the, how, how we actually go about matchmaking companies is, is quite a simple three-step process. We talk to the individual company, discuss with them what is their business challenge. Then we set up sort of a cross-disciplinary team 
of, of companies being interested in actually adding to this company's challenge. Um, we don't sign up non-disclosure agreements. We, we create a safe space in BlockSub and we discuss, and then we try to help each other, to inspire each other, to work along the lines with each other in order to, to, to actually solve the challenge for company X. Of course, along the way, we, we do NDAs and, and we talk about IP, IPA rights, et cetera, et cetera. But, but very from the first entry point, this is a very open source process. Then, of course, uh, we facilitate uh, the team in creating new solutions and, and hopefully come up with, with, uh, with solutions uh, in the end of this process. And urban partnerships is sort of the overall theme for all the matchmaking programs that we run in, uh, in BlockSub. I just wanted to give you one very concrete example, because when I'm talking about matchmaking and creating solutions, it might be, it, it might be quite varied. You know, some companies are focusing on product solutions products, creating new products. Some companies are, are, are more interested in, in the collaboration between, between companies, creating new forms of partnerships, process innovation for that matter. And some companies, especially sort of, of, of course, public stakeholders are much more interested in, 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 um, in innovating regulatory systems surrounding and underlining the ANC industry. So when I'm talking about matchmaking and creating new solutions, it's both product solutions, process solutions and policy solutions. But to give you a very, a very concrete example of what we've just done just prior to the summer, summer break here in Denmark, this is something called Airbird. And it's, it's a little Airbird produced in plastic, but designed by GXN, which is a local design firm, and, uh, and, and uh, produced by Velux, which is one of the, the great corporate companies coming out of Denmark uh, within, within uh, window uh, manufacturing. And then Leapcraft as a third component here. Leapcraft is a, is, a, is a local startup focusing on IET and sensor solutions focusing on indoor climate. So what the Airbird does is it's, it's monitoring indoor climate, at, climate in schools, in offices, in homes. And the second that the CO2, CO2 level is... Uh, is, is, um, is uh, uh, more than it's, uh, it's, it's uh, allowed to be within the room, I think it's the 1000 ppm, uh, according to Danish rules, then uh, the bird is whistling. So imagine th this little bird, some 20 centimeters long, 15 centimeters high, you can either put them on, the, on, the, on, a, on, on a table, you can hang them on the wall. And the second the CO2 level increases more than, a, than is allowed in schools or offices, the bird is singing obviously making very, very uh, noticeable that you have to open the window or for that matter, uh, do th something about the indoor air quality. Now, this is just a very, very concrete, very pragmatic example of, of the partnerships that we create. We are out of it. It's not our business, but we create the initial connections and partnerships. So that is our, our in, in essence, that is, that is what we do. And the reason why we do it, of course, is that because um, the, the, the construction industry calls for efficiency. It calls for new ways of collaborating. And as you probably all know, the McKinsey report coming out a couple of years ago said that the global construction industry actually holds efficient potentials, efficiency potentials for up to 50, 60 percent, some of them being new ways of collaborating, some of them being new ways of technology. And the collaboration part, that is what we underline in, in BlockSub. So the, 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 the way we do that, of course, is to reach out, reach out to the AEC hackathon community. And when I first met Damon and, and Greg Howe some years ago, I was, I was thrilled and, and, and really, really proud to, uh, to get close to people who have boosted uh, the community uh, within the AEC industry. The way the hackathon is done is tremendous. Uh, you uh, pick up... Uh, solutions or you pick up challenges from Monday to Friday, you solve them through the weekend and you apply them the following Monday. That's sort of the essence of the AEC hackathon. We've done that twice now and I'm proud to present, of course, that we're going to do that next year as well. It will be the third AEC hackathon in, uh, in BlockSub and I'm really, really eager and, and, and proud to present that we will be uh, opening up the, the doors in, in BlockSub uh, next year in uh, March, from the 5th to the 7th of March to be exact. And all of you out there, of course, are invited. If you can come and if you can't come, 
we can probably hook you on 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 some online uh, platform uh, at at that point in time. So I'm I'm quite uh, thrilled to please and pleased, of course, to to announce that we will be doing together with Greg and together with uh, Damon Hernandez and Greg House do the AEC Hackathon in Blocksop in 2021 next year in uh, March. So welcome you all, and I hope that this little introduction gave you an idea of a platform which is very wide in its thinking. It's including both public stakeholders, private stakeholders, corporates, startups, SMEs, in order to blend uh, their innovative capacity, in order to help each other, in order to inspire each other, and in order to hopefully create new solutions, both product related, process related, and policy related. Uh, and with that, I wish you all uh, a pleasant hackathon uh, and a pleasant online hackathon experience this year. Go do it. I know that uh, you have the capacity to do it. We saw that twice now in Blocksop. And of course, I know that we'll see it here at the online version. So thanks from me. Thanks from Copenhagen. And over to you, Nils. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to see if I can uh, steal the show here. Does that look right, Torben? It looks perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Torben. So I, uh, I discussed a little bit with Torben about what we we're going to uh, uh, talk about. And we wanted to make the case for, for of course, new digital technology and construction because it's a huge part of what we, we both uh, work with. Um, I have to apologize for the connection if it's not too good. Those of you who can see my background can see I'm in a surf shack in the northern part of uh, uh, Denmark where, where there's very poor internet and uh, the weather sucks to be quite honest and there are no waves. So I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy to be joining you guys uh, 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 anyway. I, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is uh, Nels Falk. I, I have a civil engineering background. I've been working in construction for about 25 years. And I've spent the last maybe 10 years working uh, very much with technology in, uh, in, in construction. I'm the CEO of a small company called uh, HD Lab. We work with uh, technology for construction and that ranges from uh, exoskeletons and generative design and robots to reality capture and BIM and all sorts of uh, things. So we really like to work with uh, you can say next generation technology and see how we can pull that into the, the current uh, construction uh, projects and uh, create uh, uh, a value with them. So we're very uh, va value driven uh, and very focused on trying to solve some of the problems that con construction uh, have. We are what uh, Torben likes to call born in uh, Blocksoft. We started the company on uh, April 3rd, uh, two and a half years ago the same day that blocks opened so never we've never tried a different life than living inside the uh, blocks which is a strange and fantastic place to uh, because it's kind of a, a miniature universe in itself uh, it has as you can see uh, uh, this the city pulled into the middle of it we have kids playing and we have a, a, a cafe and we have a fitness center and we have the, 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 the big pool just outside our windows. And at the same time, we have a, what is it, a hundred and something companies that, uh, that uh, live together and collaborate in, in, in the building. So it is a very different environment. Um, it can be very noisy, but it's also one that's full of, of, uh, of uh, different opportunities. Uh, I'm going to try and talk about uh, uh, one of those uh, cases that we were uh, across uh, blocks up over the last two years, actually. Uh, and and uh, the case I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about is how we've tried to progress blockchains in, in construction and very much about how we try to, to do that, not by looking at it as a technology, but looking at it as uh maybe a technology that can solve a problem and that's because what we see a lot in the community in in, in blocks Hub is that construction needs as we put it here a new technology to solve some of the challenges and one of the challenges is as torben said the low productivity another one is construction projects inherently have a very high risk uh, 
we have a, a really hard time uh, proving that we're a sustainable industry. I can tell you that in Denmark, the construction industry is the, the only indexed industry that has had a growing CO2 footprint for the last 20 years. Everybody else has had a falling CO2 footprint. So we really stand out as some of the, the bad guys. Uh, and uh, we, we have uh, not developed our product and our processes and our role in society enough over the last uh, uh, 20 years. So there, there's enough problems to go around uh, when it comes to trying to, to solve uh, something. So the, the project uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about is Pygridis uh, blockchains, which in Danish means uh, construction blockchains which was an initiative that was uh, founded in, uh, in BlocksUp out of curiosity and out of uh, a desire to see if we, if we could use a new technology to some, solve some of the problems uh, in construction. So blockchain is, is of course, uh, uh, much debated and uh, uh, much, the, you can say, discussed uh, technology. Uh, often when we see a uh, blockchain is depicted something like this, uh, glowing chains and uh, Bitcoin symbols and all that. Uh, so we were a little bit, uh, I don't think any of us really knew that much about blockchain more than on a, a wired magazine level. So we were kind of curious if this new technology actually something that could be relevant for, for, uh, uh, for construction. So we started having a discussion on it on, on, uh, uh, on a cross-level platform in, in uh, blocks. Uh, and, uh, and we actually started looking into what is, uh, what does blockchain, what is it actually? And what we found is that it's a, actually a very unsexy uh, technology. That's probably why most of the presentations look like this, because this is what an actual blockchain looks like. And it doesn't really, doesn't really sell that many tickets. Uh, so it's not so much the technology uh, that it's sexy, what's very perhaps sexy is, is about what, what we can do with it. And if you look apart from the, the, what we did was we looked up apart from the cryptocurrencies and said this whole use of blockchain as an uh, enterprise uh, tool, enterprise blockchains, what can we use that for? So we started a, a, a project uh, with the Blocksop and with Smith Technology and engaged a number of uh, industry partners in having a discussion about uh, first trying to educate them on what blockchain was, and then trying to dive into what type of problems can we uh, solve with this. So it was a little bit a technology looking for a problem uh, to, to, to begin with. So first off, what we did was, I'm not gonna educate you on what blockchains is, there are, there are people that are better at that, but, but, but we tried to, to punch down to the basics of what is the technology. And it is, strangely enough, uh, a number of blocks of data that's, that makes up chains in, in, in a somewhat different structure. So the, the blockchains are, in our view, just a different way of making it a, a database. And uh, what we found was that the, uh, one of the big things in the blockchain that we got was this ledger, the, the so-called blockchain ledger or the open ledger that uh, opposite to a, a, a database where you can read, write and edit and delete and change and do all that. You get this ledger almost like a church book where you can write and read. So you get this, this single source of truth or this, this uh, one ledger that you, you can go through. So once we started digging into the core of that, we could kind of see that there were some properties in, in blockchains that actually uh, made, I mean, were some characteristics of blockchain that make, made sense as a technology for, for construction. So one part of it was that we had a technology here that was very good at, at managing complex data structures. We got this open ledger that was, could potentially work as like a project ledger that could have a, a project truth to it. There was a, an element of cryptology that was uh, inherent to the technology that could help you keep uh, proprietary stuff uh, uh, locked down. And uh, there was the whole uh, validation and peer-to-peer and -peer user aspect of the technology that kind of looked like a construction project, the way that we ex exchange it and especially the distributed network, which is also a core part of, 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 of the blockchain technology, is actually, rather than the, the a hierarchical uh, centralized network, is actually the way a construction project functions. If, if you take a construction project apart, it's a lot of uh, transactions and deals and interactions between a number of different parties 
that see each other more in, in peer to peer than they see themselves in a hierarchy. So it actually was a technology, a lot of that kind of lent them to, to construction. So when we drilled it out, we could see that, well, in construction, we have a, a lot of transactions. Uh, that is something that uh, blockchain worked very well with. Blockchain is extremely good at uh, uh, creating change of custody, something that construction is very bad, poor at. We're very good at, at delivering information packages, but we're not very good at, at kind of figuring out how to build a data uh, layer where you can go and source the data later. It's very difficult for us to, to grab a component in a building and say, so who made this? Where did it come from? Who installed it? How much did we pay for it? So some uh, technology that inherently had that type of data structure look uh, very good. It's a technology that's very good with uh, constant change that fits network organization and that kind of thrives in chaotic and autonomous organizations. Blockchains don't mind exponential data generation. Uh, it's expensive uh, when you do that, but, but it doesn't mount it. And uh, it, it, at the same time, it kind of, it captures a ton of data if, if we want to. And that kind of, we, we have a, a need for that in construction because we have very little data capture and we have very little validated uh, and transparent data. Also, the, the blockchain could work in, uh, as a response for the need of openness and transparency that we're looking for these days in construction and in for, for the added accountability that it gave. So it was a technology that even though it, it wasn't made for construction, even though it was made for a different purpose, it looked like it had some characteristic that kind of fitted into the, 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 uh, the, the structure of construction and, and could make it uh, uh, beneficial. So there's a number of these things that made us think, well, maybe there's something here. This slide is a little bit finished, but uh, what we did was we broke down the technology and we sat down with industry partners. I think we had five industry workshops where a ton of people came in and uh, we had a discussion with them. We tried to educate them first on what blockchains were. And then after that, we, uh, we, we kind of said, uh, what can we use the technology for? What type of problems do you have? that uh, you would like us to, uh, to, uh, to solve with this. So we got a list out of about uh, 132 solutions that uh, people saw we could do uh, this. And when we checked them, about 80 of them, we could solve with a credit card and a database. So we kind of said, that's not a, a blockchain thing, but we actually ended up with 56 use cases that had potential. Uh, and uh, some of them were very difficult to, to, to do. Some of them required uh, global interactions or huge investments. But we actually made a short list of some of them where we said, these are actually doable. These, these are projects, these chain solutions that we could build over the course of maybe six to eight months and could deploy as uh, applications and, uh, and potentially run commercially after that. Uh, so we, uh, we put a proposal together and uh, a, a couple of companies uh, went together. It's uh, HD Lab, that's us, uh, went together with uh, companies like IBM and Solar and Sublin, Miras, a couple of others. And we got some funding to do uh, a, a, a quick sprint, an exploratory project, where we said, let's try to build six blockchain solutions that address some of these different uh, cases that we had. So right now we have these uh, six uh, blockchains under development. Um, I'll just run through them uh, quickly. The Digital Beast is a logistics uh, blockchain. Uh, Build Trust is a, a chain of custody that's built by IBM that tracks from design to uh, uh, reuse of uh, components. We have IoT Audit, which is about uh, using IoT data uh, which is the case I'm going to talk a little bit more about now. We have on-site, which is uh, 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 automated payment system. This come together, which is uh, a blockchain that contains the decisions of the, of, of the clients. And then there's BIM Partner, which is uh, an attempt to build a blockchain where you can uh, exchange model information and you can uh, use cryptology to keep some of your Revit families and some other stuff uh, a secret if you want that, but still float the, the information and we can keep track of, of changes 
in, in the project. So we came together in in in, uh, in the Blocksop uh, family, uh, and uh, we we pushed the uh, these uh, cases out. So we've been working about a year now on these uh, uh, six uh, uh, cases, and the the one uh, I'm. Uh, uh, the practical uh, or HD lab is responsible for the practical execution of is the one that has to do with IoT sensors. Um, and the thing we found was when we started digging into the use of IoT sensors just in the building that we had was that there was a ton of data uh, being generated, but most of the data was not being used very cleverly. It was mostly being used as kind of like a speedometer, so uh, like a dashboard in a car. So if you had a problem, the facility managers, they would open up the, the data and look into the sensors and say, oh, there's the problem. We can, we can see that now. So, but the data was never uh, uh, gathered. It was never used and, and it was never monetized. There was no value uh, connected to, uh, to, uh, to the data. So the way it worked was that we had a owner that were going and invent a ton of sensors because they wanted to buy this uh, dashboards, and this is this is literally millions of dollars that would go into to in in a in a big building like blocks or in a building like the airport or hospital or something like that to build that uh, dashboard, and it would have very few users, and there would be no collection uh, of data. So it's a very old-fashioned uh, business model and a very old-fashioned uh, data model. So we started to to look at it. This is just some some uh, parking sensors that uh, we installed in, in in block. Starting to look at it and say, why is this? We have all this data. None of it is saved. None of it is shared, and none of it is monetized. And it. I mean, people always say that the data is the new oil. It sometimes it's the new sand. Sometimes it's not worth that much, but it's worth exploring if we could uh, take some of this. Uh, gather it, uh, share it, and uh, and and monetize it to build uh, a, a better business model and a better use. So we went into looking at uh, the the digital twins that were being built. This is uh, not of blocks up, but uh, of, uh, of of another building. Uh, but but we could also see that most of the digital twin stuff that we got was not connected to the the the, the data of the buildings but was mostly connected to the geometry of the buildings. So there was a disconnect between the, the geometrical information and the data that we actually had uh, uh, available. The data was not uh, uh, used. So when, when we kind of went into the, the, the problem discussion aspect of this, we found well, we had a hard finding really good cases for uh, IoT uh, and uh, good OT tech stacks in, in construction. There was a disconnect between this, the sensors and, uh, and the business. And a lot of it was proprietary data as well. It was solutions that were bought and that kind of functioned one sensor, one piece of software, one user, rather than uh, having it adopted as a, as, a, as a flow of data that multiple parties could, uh, could use uh, for, for different things. So when we looked at it, it was, we looked, it was kind of like we needed this electrical scooter. You probably have this in your city as well. They popped up a couple of years ago. And it was not because they were very good. We had the scooters. We had the payment system. We had all the stuff it took uh, to, to build this. But it was not until somebody actually put the, the GPS and the loading system and the, uh, the payment system and the share right system and the charging system on the put them out on the roads that we got the, the tech stack that uh, uh, could be adopted. And I know some people hate them, but just for the sake of argument, it's actually a very good tech stack uh, that had a very quick adoption in, in, in a lot of places. So we kind of looked at this and said, this is actually what we want to do with the IoT data we have. How can we build an electrical scooter? Uh, and how can we monetize it in, 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 in a different way uh, using the, the, the blockchains? So we said, what if we took the interesting IoT data, stored it in a blockchain so we could share it and monetize it and do a lot of the work automatically? So that sounds dead easy. Uh, that must be just find some IoT, 
uh, find some data, build a blockchain, and then share it and make money on it. It's, it's a little bit more difficult than that, but it, that was the general idea that we had. So we took the, uh, we opened the can. Uh, you can say in blocks up, uh, we went in and said the building blocks contains maybe 45,000 sensors. And we have a ton of uh, IoT uh, sitting around there. Took maybe take all the sensors. We took maybe 55 different sensor types that are spread out across uh, the building. And we started looking at the payloads. Uh, what is it they're emitting? How often are they emitting it? What type of information can we get out of it? And the idea was to then stick that in a blockchain and see if we can get a new uh, payment uh, monetization uh, system out of it and to automate the, 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 the gather, share, and, uh, and payment uh, of the data. So we took a ton of the sensors in uh, BlockSop. We actually took something from other buildings as well, just so we could have comparable data. So we could have like temperature data from our building and we could have temperature data from uh, other buildings and we could have the weather data from uh, uh, the CO2 levels or whatever it may be from, from uh, our own building and from our own sensors and also su uh, supplement that with some, some other stuff. So that was one part. Some of these sensors, they emit data every one-fifth of a second, some of them every hour. So we needed uh, a system in the middle to be like a broker system where we could take the data in and write rules and say when we wanted to, to, to save it. So we found uh, some software in, in India, some guys called the Winjit have, had made an a application or system called IoT Sense that we could connect all these different uh, sensors with. I think we're using, with the 55 sensors, I think we're using 40 different uh, protocols and uh, a ton of different APIs because it's even though there's a ton of standards in the world of uh, IoT, not a lot of people are using the standards or they're only using kind of sort of using the standards. So we took all the IoT data in and we kind of made some rules of when the IoT data was uh, uh, interesting. So for instance, if, if nothing happens in the building, we take a picture a day. If you have a lot of traffic in the building and we can see that on the movement sensors and the temperature goes up and down, we take pictures more often to, to, to save. So even though we could take a picture on 15th of a second, we, we, we choose when to store this uh, information just to, to give you an example. So we built a number of rules as to when information is interesting to, to store. And then we take the information out of uh, IoT Sense we stick it in a database and then we throw it into MS Azure blockchain service. And from there we create a quorum based uh, blockchain and we have uh, two smart contracts uh, sitting on them. So payment can happen to uh, different parties in the, in, in the value chain. So it's a little bit, it's, it's actually a fairly complex uh, 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 tech stack because every sensor comes with its own protocols when you define the things, it, it's a little bit hand needed, but, but we managed to set up a ton of automation for this. So it, uh, we have a, a clear line of um, uh, data acquisition from the sensors in the building to, the, to a Mongo database that we then use as a, uh, to connect to the, the, the blockchain and then we can create the, or the endpoint and then we can create the, the blockchain from there. We then write the smart contracts in Solidity, and we focused on two types of smart contracts. One where we give payment to the people who deliver the data, and one where we take payment from people who use the data. So rather than classic business model of a client that has to pay for a ton of sensors to be installed, and then hopefully getting some value out of it, we can now have a business model where the client can say, I'm interested in this data. I will pay for it when it appears. I'll just pull it out of the blockchain and we can have a ton of different parties that can source that data and we'll get paid for the data rather than for the sensor and for the installation. So that's, that's the general idea that uh, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, in, install. For the tech heads out there, I can, we, we have put up a, top, a couple of uh, servers for this. We've done a, a lot of uh, Ubuntu scripting and the, a lot of uh, setup in, in, in that environment. Then we have the, the Winjit broker system where we have listed all the different um, uh, sensors. We've had to write some APIs and we had to do some handheld stuff. 
but uh, as long as we multiply numbers of the same sensors, it's actually not that. And then the system to build uh, a dashboard where we can kind of see the data that we're writing into the uh, 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 the blockchain. And in the end, we have a, a, a blockchain that you can see here, that's a quorum blockchain, where the individual blocks uh, can be connected to, and we have transaction hashes, and we have uh, the data uh, that's encrypted. So every, every transaction is, is encrypted. And to be able to read it, you have to, uh, to, uh, to, to have the key, and you get the key by paying uh, using the, 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 the smart contract. So what we get is, is a different uh, potential value chain for this. This is the app uh, location, that, the app that we're de developing, where you can see the three main parties involved, the IoT supplier, the people who make the, the sensors, the IoT installer, the electrician, or the, the, the contractor, and the customer, the end user, or the facility management company, they, they get a different uh, role now. But the, the, the IoT suppliers can supply the, the uh, sensors and they can get paid by use every time we take some interesting data from their blockchain and uh, sorry from from their sensor and write it into the blockchain they will get paid and they will get paid depending on how interesting the customer thinks the the, the data is the iot installer gets a, a, a cut of that and the customer pays uh, for that so there's an initial setup that where where the business model is, is different than the current business model but we weighed it out so so it's in balance they everybody gets their money uh but on top of this we can also source a lot more data, which means that the customers uh, in the end can, uh, can also pull out reports and put out benchmarks or put scripts on top that, that manages their data and sets off alarms if the CO2 gets too high or if there's a fire in the building or whatever it is. So they can do more with the technology. They have a better uh, use of the data and uh, the data uh, has value because it's paid for, it's not just the sensor that's paid for, it's the, actually the data that's, uh, uh, that's bought and, 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 and sold here. So to, to explain it to the clients, because when we talk to the clients, they don't necessarily understand that uh, we have a blockchain solution that talks to IoT that may be lost on, on a lot of people. But what we try to explain to them is that we try to make a Spotify for uh, building data. Uh, and we, we can take primarily IoT data into the, the application. And uh, we are the platform owners. We are like the Spotify. We, we, take, we take the crumbs uh, that, uh, that are in the transaction and, and try to make a, a, a living on this. The crumb chip, in the, the, you can say the Spotify version, the artist, here will be the IoT supplier. The middleman, the record label is the installer and the content is in Spotify the song and here it's the IoT data and you have a subscriber which would be the facility manager. So we try to explain it like that, that we have the kind of sort of the same business model as, as, uh, uh, as uh, Spotify and it, it actually changes the value proposition both for the supplier, the installer, the facility manager, the building owners, but also for us as tech suppliers, it's, it's a different game because we don't just make a solution and uh, leave a uh, part of the process and have to keep these uh, environments uh, under development and, uh, and, and running. So we become an active uh, party, uh, a supporter with, uh, with uh, uh, technology. Uh, so what we got out of this was uh, uh this uh, spotify for iot we got this model we got the monetization of the data uh we got to focus on collecting the important data we can share the data the interesting we can share it with other building owners uh, we can share it with uh, society we can make it uh, available for anybody who wants to pay we can search and query the the data that we have in the blockchain uh, and we know it's true we know it's uh, transparent uh, and we can create reports. We can put some of it. We we try to put a little bit of machine learning on top of it as well to see uh, trend reporting and stuff like that. And we can set up 
both based on or based on uh, uh, projections. So it it, it kind of completely changes the current information, the, the current use of IoT data only as information and dashboards into making it a, a commodity. And uh, also trying to be a little bit more fun what's actually valuable information in, uh, in, 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 in this process. So it took us the, we actually went back to this uh, a while back. Often when we do this tech, these tech exploitations, this is our exploration of what we can do. On bad days, we are just being able to a technological magic trick. You know, we have this technology, boom, look what we can do it. On, on better days, we actually show that we can. Here we try to solve the problem of the lack of transparency, the lack of use of, of sensor data in, in, uh, in, in construction. But at the same time, we actually got to a point where we could also uh, new products uh, on a new business model. We could give a different customer experience and we could optimize the operations. So uh, the team took us back to the electrical scooter and said, this is, this is actually a hack, like it has potential to grow into something uh, uh, commercial, not because it's technological uh, invention or because great use of the technology, but because it's a business model, it's uh, new services, uh, it, has the potential to customer experience and it's better and cheaper than the current way of uh, working. So uh, it not only solves the problem, but it actually uh, kind of levels off with this uh, a new type of for, uh, uh, for data in, uh, in, in construction. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the case where we are right now. We, we the whole house, uh, in, in blocks up to, 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 to do this from uh, common organizations to the physical uh, uh, building uh, to the thing where we had the discussion and uh, to the funding that could come and give us a bit of money uh, and, uh, and, and, and help us in, uh, 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 in this. So this is a, a large degree of credit to, to the collaboration of the house that we could uh, get this uh, done. Cool. That was the story I was going to tell you today. <laughs>